about to entrust some things to us until we show him that we're mature enough to handle it. Amen. No need of him giving us over, putting us over a million dollars, and we got, and we're, and we're struggling, trying to decide whether we're gonna give him 10 percent of our hundred dollars. Chances are he's not gonna put you over a million dollars if you're still trying to decide what you're gonna do with your hundred. But when he sees that we are mature enough to handle what's coming next, then he has no problem giving it to us. Amen. So how does, how has God been getting us ready this year for what's ahead? Um, he has used our experiences, some good, some bad, and some ugly. We've had, we've had a plethora of experiences in our lives this year. Amen. We've had some challenges, stuff that we had no idea was waiting on us, things we have never faced before. We've had those experiences. And the reason that God uh, allows those experiences is to prepare us on the inside. We got the outside. We, you know, we, we know how to do church. We know how to do stuff. We know how to usher, sing, pray, prayer. Whatever we need to do, we understand how to do that. But God wants to work on the inner man. Because you can have all the giftings that you want, but if you don't have any fruit to go with it, the gift doesn't mean anything. And it's not on God that he doesn't want you to use your gift, your talent, or whatever, your ability. But more importantly, he wants you to have some fruit. That's right. Doesn't matter how well you can sing if you're just hateful as a dog. Right. Don't matter if you, if you can preach heaven down and don't know how to talk to people when you get through. That's right. If you have no patience, no long-suffering, no kindness, no gentleness, no love, no joy, all of the rest of that is immaterial. Right. It doesn't matter. So God uses our experiences to strengthen us on the inner man and to do the inner work in us so that at the completion of that, we will be able not only to be a witness, but we're all able to walk in and operate effectively in everything that is assigned our hands to do. Am I making sense to anybody this morning? <clears throat> so the Apostle Paul becomes our role model this morning. For this, he becomes our object lesson. We know his history, how he was persecuted, how he persecuted the church, how he was, you know, breathed threats against them. But one day, he got stopped in his tracks, and he had a divine encounter on the road to Damascus. And he knew to, to a degree what he was going to suffer. But he had no idea it would go to the extent that it went. Have you ever had a thing, you thought it was going to be quick and in a hurry, and it went on and on, and it got more intense, and it got worse and worse as time went on. You had no idea at the beginning that it was going to take the turn that it did. But in the midst of everything that Paul suffered, he develops a mindset and a resolve that is peculiar to many of us. He realized that what he was going through was not about him, but by, about what God wanted to do through him. I submit to you this morning, everything that you have gone through this year, it wasn't about you. It wasn't about you. We take everything so personal. We take everything on our shoulders. But sometimes it's really not about you. But it's about the people that God has assigned you to. For somebody's always watching us. You know the song, I always feel like somebody's watching me. Uh, yeah, I know, you remember. Yeah, you know, somebody is always watching and they may never say anything, but somebody wants to see how we are dealing with that. Somebody needs to see how you deal with taking chemotherapy and you can still come to church. Somebody needs to see how you deal with trouble in your home and you can still be faithful and committed. Somebody needs to see, know the all how you're facing the odds that they know you got, you're dealing with, and yet you can still give God yeah, praise. Yeah, yeah. You still have a smile on your face. Somebody needs to know yeah. how to get through. And what better, what better person to show them than you? Because all of us have some influence over somebody. All of us have some influence. If you don't think they're watching you, you do something on your job. The first thing they say to you, oh, I thought you was a Christian. And this looked like to me, if they knew that much about being a Christian, they would be one. Right. But, but they're looking at you as the model. 
So when, when, they, when, when the boss comes around and say everybody's going home, they're looking at you because you, you the one been, you know, saying all this stuff. You the one that got your Bible in the break room. You the one that been preaching to folk and telling them how God is a provider and how you love the Lord. They seen you on YouTube, turning up the carpet and holding up the service. And they want to see, and they want to see how you going to respond when the news comes by that everybody's going home. Because if now is now is this truth, it's now is when the truth comes out. Do you really believe in the God you've been trying to tell us about? When you when you couldn't sit with us because you just, you know, so holy and, and you all that, you know, now when it, when the rubber meets the road, what do you really have? And so God is using our experiences so that somebody can see what do you really have. And sometimes he used it so I can see what I really have. Because, you know, sometimes we just, you know, with our wonderful self, we just, we are wonderful. We're just great. We're just so saved, so sanctified, so holy. And we just think we have arrived and a situation will come up. And you'll think of a word you hadn't thought about in a long time with your saved self. And you'll think, and you'll think something about somebody. And you didn't think you were thinking them thoughts anymore. And you'll feel a urge that you didn't feel no more. And suddenly you realize you're really not where you thought you were. So sometimes he used our experiences to reveal, no, you're not that wonderful. That you need to keep right on praying and keep on doing everything you've been telling everybody else they need to do. You need to do it too. Amen. Amen. But Paul understood something. In his understanding that it's not about me, but it's about the assignment, he models faith in, for us by showing us some positive ways to deal with the issues that we face. Number one, and this is my, these are my three points, so I'll be done in just a few minutes. Number one, <clears throat> put it in perspective. Put it in perspective. The song says, when I, when I look around and I, and I think things over, I got to be honest, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. Amen. Paul says, and if you want to turn, if you'll turn to Romans, we're just going to turn just a little bit this morning. Romans chapter 8, which I want you to turn with me. Romans chapter 8. And we're going to look at verse 18. And we're talking about keeping it in perspective. Verse 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. He says, it's, it's not worthy me spending all my time thinking about what I'm going through. Because in the big things, and when I put it in perspective, you know when you take six months of suffering and put it in ten years, it ain't much, is it? And the longer time passes, the less the suffering becomes important. Does that make sense to anybody? Yes. You know, because we're in it right now, we just think this is the worst thing I have ever been through. Nobody has ever had it like I had it. Somebody called the pastor. I don't think I can take this no more. And everybody is rallying around. But when you look and when you put it in perspective, when we look at the big picture, we just, we're so content with looking at the little small picture. But when you take my, my little suffering that I'm going through now and put it in the big picture, it really don't seem that bad. We just got to learn how to put it in perspective and see it for what it is. And maybe sometimes when we, if we would just ask the question, what, Lord, what are you trying to do in me through what I'm going through? What, is, what, is, what are you trying to work out in my life? And as we submit ourselves to, to what he is trying to do, then it allows us to get a different perspective on it. That makes sense? And it, maybe it's not quite so bad as, as we think it is. In our scripture that we read this morning, Paul says, this is, this suffering, these things I've been going through, they're momentary, and it's light affliction. It's not going to last always. You know, we sing, I'm so glad the trouble don't last always. But sometimes it does feel like it doesn't. It, where, where, where are my real people at? Where, I want the real people to wave your hand. Sometimes that's the longest six months you have ever spent in your life. Lord, will it ever end? 
But Paul says, when I, when I get my divine perspective, yes, yes. When, I, when I consider the fact that God has a purpose, that if, it, if it's in my life, God has a purpose. For he is a very intentional God. God doesn't do anything at random. Nothing comes into your life at random. If it's there, God allowed it. If you don't believe me, ask Job. He didn't give the devil free reign over Job's life. God was in control of everything that came into Job's life. God is in control of everything that comes in our lives. If it's there, God already knows about it. It, didn't take God, it doesn't take God by surprise. Amen? But it's part of what the purpose and the plan that he has for us. So Paul says, when I look at the big scheme of things, this is just momentary. This is light affliction. It's really not that bad. I'm going to get through this. Somebody said there will be glory, there will be glory. after this. When you look at the big picture, it's not going to matter as much later as it does now. Anybody ever been beyond something and you look back on it and it really wasn't that bad? You know, you kind of blew it out of proportion because it was painful then. But when you look back on it, you could see that God, there were some benefits that came about from what you went through. Anybody, is anybody seeing some benefits? Just what things that you've been through this year? seen some benefits. I have some, been some tough situations this year, but you know what? I, I, but God has used this year to make me grow up. Sometimes we just got to grow up with our wonderful, saved, sanctified, tongue-talking, Holy Ghost-filled selves. Sometimes God just need, needs for us to just to grow up and be spiritually mature. You can be gifted and not be spiritually mature. You can be educated. You can give all sorts of money and not be mature. So sometimes God just has to mature us. He has to help us to grow up. So there are some benefits to what he does. He says, as a matter of fact, this momentary light affliction is working for us. Can somebody say, my pain is working for me? Working. It's working for you because it's working out something. Uh, Daryl Coley sang a song, he's preparing me for something that I can't, I can't handle right now. And he's making me ready because he cares. And that's all he's been doing all of 2012. He just been making us ready. You thought it, was, it didn't come to kill you, it came to make you ready for the next level, the next thing that God wants to entrust in you. It came to make you ready for that promotion that's coming. It came to make you ready for that increase that's coming to your life. Does it make sense? So the first thing, put it in perspective. And you, you just got to love Paul and admire him for the way he, he does things. You know, for he says, he, in one place, he says, I've learned that whatever state I'm in, therewith I'm going to be content. Now, there's a difference between being content in a situation and being content with a situation. There are a lot of things we're not content with, but we can learn to be content in them. Does that make sense? I, I want the situation to change, but in the meantime, I'm still going to give God praise. I'm not going to stop coming to church because I'm going through. Amen. I'm not going to change my membership to Bedside Baptist just because I'm having, I'm, I'm having a down day. I, I'm not going to join Mattress Memorial just because things aren't going the way I want to. Amen. Even though hell might be breaking out around me, I was glad. When they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There comes a place where you got to keep on going. Right. Amen. We, we don't have time to, to stop. That's right. So first thing, he, Paul doesn't, now notice Paul doesn't deny his pain. You know, if you stub your toe, you don't have to deny that it's hurting. All you got to do is repent for what you said when you hit it. <laughs> you know, but don't, no, there's no need to defy to deny. If you hurt this year, you just hurt. If your feelings were hurt this year, they were just hurt. Amen? If you had disappointment, if you were sick in your body, it is what it is. But I'm here to tell you there's a way that we can function still while it is what it is. Amen? There's a way that we can still keep on going and doing the things we need to do. We don't need to break down just because things are breaking down around us. Because God never intended for us to be to be ruled by external circumstances. That's right. That's right. God never intended for us to shut down because somebody looked at us funny. That's right. So what? What does God say? What does God say? So, so, and so didn't speak to you. Is, 
Is that going to ruin your whole week? Will life keep on going if she didn't speak to you? Maybe she just had something on her mind. Or maybe she just didn't want to speak. But at any rate, can you keep on going? Why do we let those things shut us down? So what did they let you sing your song? He said, I put a song in your mouth. It ain't important that anybody hear this. It's important that you have a song in your heart. Amen. So that it puts you on the rotation for the usher that month. So what? So what? Come on in here. Let's keep going. Stop allowing external things to threaten our inner peace and to cause us to miss out on what God has for us. Amen? So don't deny it, but defy it. Know how to go on anyway. I had a situation recently, and I'm still waiting for God to resolve it, because when he does, that'll be my testimony, and I'll tell you about it. But in the meantime, the particular day that I was driving, and I was upset, and all of a sudden, I, kept, I got so upset that I kept, I, as I was driving, my left side kept getting numb. And I thought, well, this is not good right here, because you know, I'm, I'm on a highway, and I, I'm not even close to any pen or any in more head anywhere else. But I decided somewhere at the end of that thing, you know what, I'm not going to let this kill me. And you have to make your mind up the situation. You can't let it kill you. You can't. You got to keep living. Amen. And I'm still believing God to work this thing out. But in the meantime, I'm just talking about what we're going to do in the meantime. I'm not going to let it kill me. Every Sunday, I'm going to be right on up here. And I'm going to, whatever, whatever pastor allows me to do, I'm going to keep on doing it. Amen. In spite of. Not going to let it kill me because he's got too much ahead of me to die right here. I'm not going to die in the wintertime because spring is coming. There's some new life. You know, it, it looks kind of dull. You know, Trey was talking about yesterday. He said, where are the leaves? I said, baby, the leaves are gone. But there's still some life. And, you know, it doesn't look like there's any life. But about, but about the end of March or April, you'll begin to see stuff begin to bloom. Yes, 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 yes. It looked like it was dead, but there's some life, there's some things going on behind the surface that you can't even see. That's why Paul says, I have not seen nor ill heard, it haven't even entered in your heart, the things that God has prepared. So keep it in perspective. And stop, stop rehearsing the pain. Can we just let it go? Yes, it hurt. Let it go. Yes, it hurt your feelings. Let it go. Do you really want to take hurt feelings into 2013? Do you really want to take bitterness into 2013? Do you really want to take he said, she said, she looked at me funny. I don't know why they don't include me. Do you really want to take that into a new year? I don't want to go into new year thinking about anything that happened this year. I plan next tomorrow night at about 11.59, I plan to develop amnesia. Well. I'm going to have amnesia. I'm like, oh, what, what, what problem? What problem are you talking about? What, what situation? Which one are you talking about? Uh, any, anybody else want to get amnesia? Just, yeah, just get amnesia. I'm going to forget those things that are behind me because it's over. It's over. Can we let, let sleeping dogs lie? It's over. You made it through, so why you want to keep digging it back up? Even a dog don't keep digging up the same bone. He digs it and he covers it up and he goes on about his business. And we constantly rehearsing the pain. Every time we see somebody in Walmart, we tell them about what we've been through. Call us on the phone. Nothing positive, just rehearsing the pain. What the devil did, what the devil did what he was supposed to do. Why are you surprised when, you, when you're under attack? That's what he's supposed to do. But did you do what you were supposed to do in response? Uh, let me, I'm going to let you go. we got to go on. Put it in perspective. Give it to God. Let him handle it. 